Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and we've got uh, uh, Jeremiah and Aaron today. Can I get a shot here? Oh, you're <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're in, bro. You're in. No, we're uh, in um, we are at Camp Ben McCullough. And this is the watering hole, which is incredible. And uh, uh, we're going to do some of the national news that's going on right now. We're going to share this place with you. Uh, we've got a meet and greet tonight. A lot of cool stuff happening. Uh, don't forget to like the channel, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with all your friends and colleagues. But this place is totally amazing, totally worth the drive out here, and I uh, can't wait to share it's it. It's in you. Driftwood, Texas. Driftwood, if, Texas. If they want to know, it's in Driftwood. Driftwood, Texas. Yeah. Dude, thanks for the Crocs. I'll say that right away, because, uh... Okay, you got it. Feel the water color different. I mean, wow, it's cold. Yeah, it's really cold. So that's the natural spring where everything comes out. Very cool. Oh, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. You do not see a lot of places on earth like this that you can go and enjoy and hang out and people just sitting there in the stream. And uh, it is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So I, I just, I just, it's warm. The water is incredibly warm, which sounds crazy, but I mean, it's just, this is beautiful. This is absolutely just a stunning place to hang out. What's the name of this creek again? Uh, this is Onion Creek. Onion Creek. This is incredible. But, uh, you know, it's been just an amazing week out here with Aaron so far. And, uh, you know, Aaron is a Marine. Aaron is in law enforcement right now. I think once a Marine, always a Marine, right? So, December 5th. Okay. So, but again, thank you for your service. Thank you for your continued service to this country. You're absolutely an amazing individual. I've learned so much here. I've been so grateful to get the security training and everything that they taught me this week has been, I mean, it is absolutely incredible. But the one thing that you're real big on is silver. Absolutely. And I want to talk to you about on my channel about how someone can get started stacking silver. And, uh, you know, people see hundred ounce bars, you know, I can't afford that. Where, where do you recommend somebody starts? Uh, I think you need to start with constitutional silver, which is going to be your 1964 and older dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars. Because but, those are 90% silver, right? Right. And a lot of times the premiums are lower on them because the premiums already been paid by the government when they minted them, essentially. Um, so I would start with dimes and I would have a lot of dimes because you can use them for bartering as well. You but, know, one thing that uh, um, I want to point out is people have bucket of change. Go through that old bucket of change. You'd be surprised how many quarters and, and silver dimes you have in there from that old chain. So 1964 and below. And right. uh, uh, do you, you like mercury dimes? Uh, I do. I don't really buy much constitutional anymore, but uh, also your one ounce rounds and uh, coins are, are good too. But yeah, you want to have fractional silver, at least in the beginning. Okay. But I've been good stacking, yeah, good for bar and all that. So, but I've been stacking five or six years. So I'm to the point where I have a decent amount to where I try and buy in bulk to where I get more silver for the premium. Yeah, you're getting but, 100 ounce bars. It's yeah. crazy. It's really, really impressive. And and you, as JB says, walk the walk and does, you know, your talk is just, it's amazing and everything. You've got me motivated to do much, much more. But the other thing is water filtration and preparation for food that you're real big on. Um, right. You know, what do you think about dehydrated food? Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, yeah, I actually have some of it. Um, I have probably about six months uh, worth of food, but I want to try and get to a year. So there's always room for improvement. Uh, so with the unrest in the world, you know, with places like South Africa and Cuba and crazy stuff that we're seeing, right. you know, we don't want that to ever come here, you know, hopefully, but people need to prepare, be prepared and, and save food and, and uh, get water ready. And you said some great numbers today. What were the numbers again, as far as how uh, long you can live without right. things? So there's, there's the rule. It's the rules of three. All right. So the rules of three. So it's three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food or 30 days. Wow. Well, again, I've learned so much during this time. The, the last thing is the water filtration. You've got a, a bunch of cool things you've shown me, but I think the coolest thing you brought out here to the stream with us 
and uh, I want you to show everybody that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's the Ketadyne Expedition. Cool. Um, Let's so get into it. Yeah. So this is the Ketadyne uh, Expedition. It's rated for approximately 20 people. It uh, the one filter can filter 26,000 gallons of water, and it can filter approximately one gallon a minute. So how this thing works? There's a ceramic filter in there, and you have this that has an end piece with a with the uh, attach the rubber hose. You put that in the, the dirty water source, and then you step on this and you just pump. So it's coming out clear. Yep. That is amazing. Yeah, and then, well, there's gonna be bubbles in it, but they'll settle out. And then you have just the regular uh, creek water right here. Wow. So what's a unit like that cost? Uh, you're looking at probably 13 to $1,500. Uh, but again, but, an but, asset, like JB right, says. You get what you pay for. This thing is, I mean, it's solid metal. Like when you feel it, it may not look heavy, but it probably weighs three or four pounds. Uh, like I think a vehicle could probably run it over and it'd be okay. So that's incredible. Let me. Can I grab that thing and take a sip out of it? And... Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I don't know if you can tell the difference in the color. I can see stuff floating here. This one I can't. I see bubbles. So here's to you guys. That's that tastes great. Yeah. So very uh, cool. But so the reason why I have this is uh, I can filter the water out of my tank. Um, but yeah, I mean, and again, he completely self-sufficient. He, he could live on his farm for probably six months without a doubt. And, uh, again, completely incredible, but it goes to being prepared and it's just, uh, it's a great asset. And I, I really think that people need to look at this life straws and other different water filtration because you need it. So, yeah, so your life straws, in my opinion, are, are great. I'm not going to you know, downplay them, but those are more for emergency. That's something to keep in your vehicle. Uh, this is more, you're using this for, you know, crap hits the fan and you're going, you need clean water for a couple years, a couple months or, you know, whatever. But your life straws really are just to get you through a, you know, in a pinch. Well, that's great. And, and, and again, thanks for everything, Aaron. But thanks again for showing us this and this beautiful place too. It's absolutely amazing. So thank you. As we walk through Onion Creek, um, this place is just absolutely stunning. And again, Texas is beautiful. We're just outside of Driftwood, Texas. And uh, there's a, some news I want to share with you guys. And they anticipate that uh, the uh, security, Social Security increase this year will be its highest in history. It will be 6.1%. Now, guys, that may be great. But what do you do if you're on a fixed income? The Social Security is the only thing you've got, and inflation's at 13. I think it's at 16% myself. But what do you do if inflation is higher? So it's not even going to keep up with the cost of living. So people need to prepare for that. Uh, Jerome Powell again opened his mouth in front of a bunch of senators today and was talking about how, hey, inflation's going to go on for a while, but uh, it's going to moderate. I love that word, these fake words transitory it's going to be temporary then it's going to moderate it's going to moderate hey kids i want you to quit fighting i want you to moderate it's insane guys it doesn't make any sense so peter schiff uh had a tweet and had some comment on this basically saying how ridiculous it is oh look at the fish i don't know if you guys can see the fish in the creek right here but there's fish right there so even peter schiff thought that this was kind of ridiculous so share your thoughts below do you guys think that this a uh, whole inflation thing is just transitory. It's going to moderate. Then it's going to bounce back. All these key words of nonsense. Okay. I, I just think people don't realize how bad it is. The unemployment numbers, first time unemployment claims came out today. And they were just over 360,000. Uh, new people filed first time unemployment claims. Now, again, this is not going to have pandemic money attached to it. This is done. Uh, it's over half the states have got rid of the pandemic uh, 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 unemployment eligibility right now. And basically, you guys are on your own when it comes to this stuff. So it will be standard unemployment. Some states are as low as $97. California goes up. It's one of the highest at $450 a week. But again, what do you do? What do you do if uh, you're getting this little money? You know, JB, we're talking about some things. I just want to add something real quick. Um, you know, what do you think as far as, you know, Peter Schiff even commented on Jerome Powell's ridiculous uh, 
uh, talk about uh, um, inflation just being transitory. Now it's going to moderate. Even Peter Schiff had an opinion on that. Do you think that inflation is is not going to continue to skyrocket? Because I think it's no. Gonna... There's no doubt it skyrockets. Look, they're going to print so much money. The Fed only can print money at this point, so it's a guarantee that it's going to be something we're going to be dealing with for a very very long time. The question is now. It's not a question if it's going to be transitory. It's a question of how high is the inflation going to run now? Realistically, inflation is around 13 and a half percent. And the question is, does it go to 15? Does yeah. it go to 18? Does it go to 20? And where does it stop? And what stops it? Here's a figure for you. Uh, Social Security says that they're going to increase the Social Security uh, figure and the payments uh, now to up 6.1%, the highest in history. Yeah. But if inflation's at 13%, or I think it's at 16, I, I, it's just not enough. People are going to have still less buying power. Yeah, you, they'll continue to have less buying power. So if you're on a fixed income, uh, if you're retired, if you're relying on that pension or that 401k, you're screwed. Yeah, get ready, guys. This is why you got to be holding gold and silver uh, because these are the two most undervalued assets on planet Earth and they are inflation hedges. And other than that, I don't know what you do right now. Um, I, yeah. I, I'm sitting on some cash, which I'm a little bit worried about, but I, I think you got to have some. But the question is, if this thing starts running really, really hot, it's going to eat your purchasing power up so fast. That pile of cash is going to be absolutely disintegrated. Your gold, your silver won't be. So make sure you're diversified. You know, on your channel, you preach getting rid of debt, which, uh, you know, we talk about a lot. You know, a lot of the stimulus programs, the, basically the stimulus programs are done right now. Yeah. You've got the final one is the child tax credit. Those payments are going to go out this week. This channel is going to monitor that really closely on how those people are going to get that. But after that, you know, there's a great story out of CNBC about how student loan providers are worried about the chaoticness of October yeah. when people have to start making student right. loan payments right. and they're not ready for well, that. Well, I want to I say one last thing before I forget, too. Uh, we talk about inflation, how hot is it going to get, yada, yada, yada. Another thing you have to worry about, too, is cash flow. Are you going to have a cash flow? The problem is that people are going to see shrink inflation, they're going to see hyperinflation, and they're going to have no cash flow. So now you're literally a sinking ship in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, that's horrific. A lot of bad things are coming. So prepare yourself. Thanks for uh, got hopping on. Got it. Okay. But guys, prepare yourself. And again, this place is beautiful outside of Driftwood, Texas. Look at this place. I mean, it's just been, this has been just a, an absolute dream week. And uh, I will share more with you guys. I'm at Salt Lake Barbecue and I met someone who follows the channel, O'Dane. And we were talking about uh, uh, the economy and so much. And he agreed to come on camera. And uh, I just want to get your, your perspective right now. You know, with everything that's going on right now, do you think things... Are, are good right now? Do you think they're bad? Do you think you believe all the news that things are just gonna snap back? You know, what's what's your feeling about all this right now? Oh, uh, well, hey, everyone, my name is O'Dain. I, I do wanna appreciate Dan for coming out, Dan and uh, Jeremiah and Aaron and sharing their experiences here in Texas. Um, for one, I, I moved here recently about a year ago from North Carolina, once I saw how things were projecting in the economy and socially and politically. And uh, since I've been here, I've been settled in pretty good. And I've noticed a lot of changes in the economic industry, if you want to call it that, because mm -hmm. right now it's just a whole engineering thing going on. But as far as like where the economy is going and how things are right now, I think it's all just a big show. I think it's just a one last hoorah before the big bang happens, if you want to put it in my perspective. Yeah, you know, as a parent, we, we shared that, you know, yes, you, yes. you know, you've got more kids than I do. And, uh, <laughs> Still going. Um, and, Still going. and uh, you know, I, I just think that I'm worried about the future right yes. now. And I think that people... Oh, don't worry about it. And, you know, you're a fairly young guy. I got a few years on you. Do you, I mean, I really concerned about, you know, what our kids are going to have. Are they going to be able to own property? Are they going to be able to go to school someday? You know, do you, are you concerned about things like that? Do yeah, you, I'm, 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 extreme. I'm I, I think about it every single day, honestly, because, um, like my children, they're homeschooled, you know, I, I've raised them up properly as best as I can, me, me, and, me and the wife can. And, uh, in my perspective, our children are doomed unless we as parents take our own measures to ensure that their environment and upbringing is properly cultivated. So I think children only have one life to live, one childhood to live. They should enjoy it to the best ability. But when you have these COVID restrictions, these, these stimulus checks that's going to make them pay taxes in the future and make their purchasing power worth nothing, that's very detrimental to their upbringing. You know, think about $5.2 trillion. 
was passed out in stimulus. And right now, the child tax credit, they say, this is it. This is the final stimulus check. And uh, you know, you may get that because you're a parent, but, but think about it, that's it. And basically, it's basically an advance on your child tax credit, which you could put on your taxes anyway. So this is the final hurrah, as far as I'm concerned. The rent moratorium's gonna end. Uh, these people are going to have to pay up. Uh, and, and everything, is going to come full circle very quickly. I think that you're going to see a lot of people that uh, are not going to know what to do. And do you have any input? Do you think that uh, do you think there's going to be more stimulus yourself? Well, for one, as far as the child tax credit, you were saying that it's an advance. I think it's really an advance on the detriment of our children's future. I don't think that our children are going to appreciate the decisions that people are making today, as far as the economy and our politicians are concerned. Like, I don't, I don't see how this is going to benefit anybody long term. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I really want our children to have the best upbringing possible. I, me, I, I keep my children in a bubble. Like, we associate with other people and other children from time and time again. But knowing that people are on medication because of anxiety, people are struggling to pay rent and struggling to pay their car. Yeah, and problems with schools and how they're, yeah. how they're teaching right now. And they're teaching critical race theory and all that. And me as a black man, I'll say it. All this critical race theory stuff and all of this racial divides going on is nonsense. Like, it's, it's all just manipulation to keep us divided from seeing what's really going on and preparing and benefiting from our livelihood today. That's you know, yeah, I want, you know, my kids are much older than yours. I told you they're 20 and 23. And I'm really glad that my kids are not in school right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for that, yeah. that they didn't have to go through the last year. <laughs> and uh, I, I just think this is a really, really tough time. But... We need to pull together. Everybody needs to work together. Uh, we need to, you know, realize that the economy is not doing as well, and uh, we all need to get along. And yeah. it's just that simple. So, and just, and just think also as far as like, you know, being glad that our children haven't been through public schools this past year. The psychological trauma that our children are facing just from wearing the mask, just from not being around their friends, like the amount of children that's committed suicide. Like, yeah, it's horrible. Abuse at home because of the stress of the parents of the uncertainty of the future like it's ridiculous like you can't tell me that this is the way of the future america it, cannot keep going in this direction you know my son and daughter were totally two different students and my son really relied on sports and this last oh, yeah. year if he would have been in school i mean yeah. god knows what would have happened yeah. because he you know he had to do well in school to participate in sports and that was the carrot that the counselors dropped and it worked and it made him get better grades and it made her become a better student. But this last year, they completely dropped that. So who knows what's going to happen? But it was an absolute pleasure meeting you. And I know we're going to continue to talk after this. So I just I want to thank you for being here tonight. Oh, and, thank you guys for coming. Uh, and, and thanks for coming on camera. I really appreciate oh, everything. No I really enjoyed talking to you tonight. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. It was definitely been a pleasure. I, I hope you guys are taking heed to what's being said. I, I'm Maybe I'm the youngest person you guys got yeah. on camera. I don't know. It's OK, but it's all good. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I would say that, you know, anybody that's in my age group that's, you know, in their 30s, upper 20s, whatever the case is, please do not follow the herd. Do not get involved in student loan debt. Go to trade school. Like, there's different things you can do. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing because you will get slaughtered just like everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just well, stay safe and stay prepared. I guess that's all I can say. Thank you very much. Oh. All right, here we go. Oh, my shoe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the answer is no. You'll never see me do that. Um, thanks for watching. This is I allegedly. Uh, no, mm -mm. not a chance. Uh, Please like, please subscribe, uh, please share it with all your friends and colleagues. If you'd like to join Patreon, we've got a wonderful Patreon channel and uh, lots of cool things happening, but uh, I will never be on the rope swing, okay? You don't have to but remember to like, share, subscribe, <laughs> notifications. Listen to that. Thank you.